And we will also add the animations for the doors and the light switches and do all of the lighting in the environment. Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial on the FNAF series where we are recreating FNAF in Unity 5. And today we're going to be showing you how to create the level from FNAF 1. Uh, we were going to use a separate level that we used in the last tutorial. In the first tutorial where we showed you the camera map and how to create the camera map, switch between cameras and have static effect in the camera. But I thought it would be good to prototype a level uh, similar to the FNAF 1 level. So I've made some objects in Blender that we're going to use today and some textures to match up with the game. Today we are going to be building what you see here as well as putting in some custom objects. So let's start from scratch. Let's start from an empty scene and we'll show you how to create this map with a few limited objects that you can download in the description. In the series, we'll continue to create out this map and change the wall textures to match more closely into the game. And at the end, we should have a playable 3D version where you can lock the player into position like the game, or you can walk around and try to avoid the enemies around the map. So let's jump back to an empty scene now. Okay, so now we are back at our empty scene and the first thing we're going to do is add a quad for our floor. So we have our quad, I'm gonna rotate it so it is flat. And I have a material in the FNAF objects folder that is a checkered floor and on this we just want to go into the quad, open up the shader and we're going to tile it, say 50 and 50. So now we have the floor that we're gonna work with and the first thing we're going to add as a model is the desk so we have a reference. And if you go into the prefabs folder of the supplied objects, I have created a couple things in Blender that we're going to use. They're just simple objects for the purpose of this game. The first thing I'm going to add is a desk and you can see that the floor is pretty small. We need to increase the size of that. And so this is gonna be our office room and I have wall segments that I made in Blender. So these can just be drag and dropped into the scene. And first I'm going to put them behind the desk. If you want to rotate the wall, you can hold down the command button on your Mac and rotate it and it will do it in increments so that it is even. And I'm going to duplicate this, which is command D, control D I believe on PC. And if you hit the V key, and go to the corner of the wall and click and drag. It will drag it to another vertex in a model. So that way you know that the lines are lined up as far as the walls go. So I'm gonna do that again. So we have the back side of our office wall and I will move the desk. I'm going to use a reference image so that we have something to go off of. So I believe I have the office picture. So we have our office picture here and you notice that the walls are pretty close outside of the desk. And the desk sits around the red line on the checkered wall. So we're just gonna use that as a reference and keep that in mind when we are building this. So the height is pretty good, you see, and uh, the walls extend a little further than in the game, but that's okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. And we're gonna continue to build out this room so duplicate and rotate while holding command, hold V, W back to position, hold V, and line it up with the back side of the wall. And I have a window portion, a office door portion. And we'll be going back and entering the animated door in a future tutorial and anything that's animated in the scene. Uh, today we're just gonna be going through and building the walls and a few items inside of the walls. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate a blank wall again. And now that we have this wall, I'm going to select all the objects and duplicate the whole wall and just drag it over to the other side. And you can see in this corner that we have the checkers line up on the wall and on this corner they do not line up. So I'm going to flip the whole wall by 180 degrees and it should line up. So we have our wall right here. I'm gonna build a back wall, but you can see for now it looks pretty good. And I'm going to add one more section so that you can stand deeper into the room. And then I'm gonna close it off with the back wall. I'm gonna duplicate this wall back here and drag that over and then rotate it so the tiles line up in the wall texture. 
and finally line it up with the wall. So I'm going to build out the rest of the map and use the camera map as my reference, which I have right here. And I'm basically going to proportion the rooms the size based off of the office size. So you can see this closet is the same size right here, and this closet is pretty similar. So those rooms will be similar size here and base the rest of the rooms off of the size of the camera map. And if you are new to Blender and just learning the interface and everything, even though I'll provide this map for you, I recommend going through and building it out yourself so you get comfortable with all of the keyboard shortcuts and just navigating around in the user interface. And I do notice when you are building these out, if you zoom in more into the object before you line up the vertexes, it does move a little bit, so I think it's more accurate the more that you zoom in. I'm not sure why that is, but try to get them locked in as close as you can. Okay, so now building that side closet, it is about the same length as our office, so I'm going to keep it consistent. We have five panels there, and so I'm going to use the same thing, and it ends about where that one begins, so that's how we'll size up that room. So I'm going to select five panels and duplicate the whole wall, so we have our backside of the other wall. And then we have three panels as the width of the room. I'm going to duplicate that and drag it over and use that. And again, I'm going to duplicate this wall, and if you have anything the same size, it's just easiest to duplicate that straight up and rotate it so that the tiles line up. And then you can align it with the vertex match. And on the far side of this wall, it is a width of two. And we have our door frame that is a width of one, which needs to be in the middle. So we'll have to modify the walls a little bit so that it is in the center. So we're gonna take our door unit, duplicate that and drag it over and rotate it to the correct side. And this, we are going to take the size, take the Y axis 0.5. And we are going to take this and create a prefab because we will need to assign a different material to this so that we can tile it differently. Because if we change the tiling on this one, you can see it will change on all of the prefabs that we've used that it is linked to. So we're going to go and find wall test material and you can see it is an unlit texture. We're going to create a new one. We call this half wall and select the same Shader is you know, under unlit texture and select the texture as the same one we have before, which is window wall. And then we are going to apply this to our prefab. So you can drag it into the mesh render. There is a array of materials. So now that this is the half wall, if we modify the tiling, you can see it won't affect any of the other walls. I'm going to tile it. The X will be 0.5 since it is half the width. And then we need to offset it so it matches up with our material. So now we have the new material on the half wall that lines up with our wall over here. If we rotate it like we have them and match up the vertex. And now we have a half wall. We just had to create a new material and modify the tiling of that material. So now if I go here and hit apply, I'm gonna delete this and copy and paste this. And then again, I'm going to move our wall over by duplicating another wall and finish out this hallway. And so that we have this door for other walls, we are going to create an empty object and call that game object half wall doorway and select all three items and drag that into our empty object and create a prefab out of that. So I'm going to do the same for the opposite hallway. And to make things easier when you're modeling, for instance, this entire section, I want to rotate the entire thing. But if I select everything and try to rotate it, it will rotate piece by piece. So we want to create an empty object again, select all of the pieces that we just had, drag it into that object. And let's name this object East Hallway. So now if I rotate that, it will rotate the entire thing and I can drag it into position. So I flipped this entire section 
So it is upside down now. Um, and then you can just go back and select all of the single components of it and rotate that to the side that you need. And if you see little lines in the building, sometimes the vertexes don't line up perfectly. So you can try to reline them up until you don't see that seam in the wall anymore. So I'm gonna build out the rest of the rooms and then we'll start adding some of the objects to the rooms. And you can see in the bathroom area that the textures aren't correct to the game. So we'll make more textures so that it matches up perfectly. Uh, this is just to show you how to model the environment. And then we'll do cleanup in future videos. So now we have our layout complete and these are just the walls. Again, we will take the textures, the wall textures, since obviously there's different walls that don't have the tile pattern and some of them have tiling underneath and we will update that it matches the game perfect. But now let's go in and I've pulled some objects from TurboSquid and I've also created some objects in Blender myself. We'll start throwing in items like posters and scenery. Um, we're gonna start on the desk and I pulled this computer monitor from TurboSquid.